Gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for uh, these beautiful days. We thank you for the chance to come to this beautiful place uh, and share in worship together. Lord, open our hearts to you. Open our minds that we truly might receive all that you call us to. And Lord, open our hearts that we might walk out now. In the name of our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Please rise for the call to worship. Gracious God, we come before you as we are. We bring our very best and offer ourselves to you. We also bring our mistakes and foolishness. And we lay these before you in trust. For we know that you are faithful and merciful. O Lord our God, we give all that we are to you, for we know that you are the only path to do life. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the first hymn, the opening hymn, number 402. <laughs> see we have one camera up here uh, and um, 
It's black, but we'll get used to it. The, the white ones would have been a lower quality. And so uh, I think that after three or four weeks, we'll, we'll just do just fine with it. Uh, and uh, this will allow us not only higher quality video, but it will allow us to um, uh, use the other cameras, the cameras that we have for other things uh, that go on uh, around the church. Uh, and this will, uh, with the computer, allow us to do live streaming. So people who are not able to come to church for sickness or uh, just inability to get out will be able to share with us as well. So praise the Lord. Uh, technology actually can be helpful. And, uh, and, and we give thanks. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's right before us. Um, looking at our announcements, uh, there is uh, one last um, uh, Black History Month entry. Uh, for uh, we've been looking at mentors, and this is in particularly education, uh, and uh, so we give thanks. I was shocked by those figures there. That let me let me get to it here. That um, uh, from the uh, historic black colleges, uh, they are only three percent of the nation's colleges, but they produce twenty percent of all African-American college graduates, and 25% of all black Americans in the STEM program. Isn't that amazing? Yes. It's amazing the job they do. And that's why our conference continues, or our, our, uh, our national conference, general conference, continues to support the black colleges, because it is really uh, lifting young black women and men uh, into, uh, into new fields. Uh, and so it is worth our money. Um, the, on the back, you'll see some of our uh, things that are happening. Uh, we do have our Lenten soup supper today, and um, so come and, and join us with that. Uh, this is also the week when we have church council. Uh, that's on Wednesday at 6. Uh, and um, so that's uh, coming, and then we've uh, just changed our youth group to be six to eight instead of five to seven and no meal because uh, the kids were wanting to eat at home anyway. So uh, that way, uh, that way we can, uh, so, so youth group, if you know any youth, uh, you can bring them at uh, six o'clock and we meet out here where, where we have our new uh, um, uh, secure area here in the front of the church. And so that's where we'll be uh, dropping the kids off and picking them up. So that's youth group. Uh, do we have other announcements that need to be made? Don't see any? Okay, Joyce oh, concerts. What? I have an What's your? We are uh, going to have an ad hoc committee to schedule some of the things that are happening this year. Okay. It's Thursday, Thursday <laughs> by Zoom, and if you're interested, you can see me or Steve. Well, I should have handed you the, the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> it helped me get my words in order anyway. Uh, we are forming an ad hoc task force or committee to come together to plan the celebration of our 125th anniversary of our church. And if you would like to be part of that, some of you will be uh, pressed into service or voluntold, as we like to say. Um, and we will be having just a Zoom meeting um, on Thursday evening. And if you're interested, please see me or Steve Dugan. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, Joy's good service. We have a big joy today. Our son, Roman, is turning 13 today. Oh. 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 To the official teenager, I feel. Yeah, yeah, good. We, we pressed him into service up on the cameras, so, uh, uh, and went off. I see there is a joy back here, and I'm going to let uh, Dan do the announcing of the joy. Yeah, I just want to, uh, for me, uh, just want to welcome uh, our new member. Uh, her name is Zoe. Uh, she was born uh, for Friday 14. So 
that was provided to us during the pregnancy stage. It was really helpful to us um, having her deliver the healthy and the healthy as well. So thank you so much. Yay! And you know what Zoe means? Life. It's life in, in Greek, yeah. yeah. So we have life in Greek. Do life. Do so. Fantastic. Yeah, other joints and concerns? Up here. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Um, joining uh, Roman in his birthday celebration is Cyrus. His birthday is today also. Oh, yay! Uh, yeah. that we think would be very helpful for him and we are praying that he agrees to go to this program. He's a bit hesitant, you know, getting going into the unknown. But he, he always talks about how he, he wants to do something, go to back to school and so on. And this program would really help him. So just prayers for that. Um, a, a concern is that uh, a friend of ours, her name is Viola, uh, passed away uh, on Monday in her sleep. She was 54 years old and um, she had heart condition. She was a very active member of the Zimbabwean community in, in Southern California. She ran a home care agency uh, and was, was very generous and helpful to everyone. We are uh, devastated by her loss, and her mother arrived yesterday from Zimbabwe. We will be going there right after church to be with them. Thank you. We lift the family and those who she was helping. We lift them to the Lord. Yes. So, just a couple things. First of all, uh, Mercy is stable. She's still on hospice. Um, she's just slowly declining, and I really appreciate all your prayers for her and my husband and his family and stuff so thank you for that um also i wanted to i thought cynthia would be here cynthia Tuley, but she's not um yesterday there was a seminar for the methodist federation of social action um if you guys have not had a chance to read the revised social principles uh that the team got together it took them eight years to pull together this document it's amazing. It really speaks about the Methodist social principles. It's, you can find it at umcjustice.org. Um, it's 49 pages, uh, but it's, and it's weighty, let me tell you, it is meaty. Um, but it's well worth reading. Um, it speaks to my heart as far as what we stand for, why we're here, how we exemplify God's love. So I strongly recommend that you guys look into it. And I believe that will be coming before our annual conference this year. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the, the plan. Yeah. I'd like to lift up uh, my friends Diane and Dennis. Uh, prayers for his health and for Diane. Prayers for changes that are happening and a lot more to come. All right. Thank you. Others? Stand more and enjoy. <laughs> And we just received a, what was it, email or Facebook message this morning from the Antarctic. Our, our granddaughter from Florida is stage manager for a theatrical group that performs on cruise ships. And uh, she's been to, the, to Singapore, to Norway, to all different parts of the world, and she just sent a message from the Antarctic. So, uh, and she's a good Methodist, too. <laughs> Pray for her safe journeys on cruise ships. 
a little risky sometimes. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to ask uh, for prayer this morning for an old, a longtime friend of mine, Mark Crotchko in North Carolina, who's dealing with skin, skin cancer uh, and some other ailments. I could like prayers for his complete recovery and healing. Thank you. All right, let's just take a moment and stand up and greet the people around you with words of peace.
be singing verses 1, 2, 3, 5, and then 1 again. Queen by God. It's uh, written in your bulletin. From the church tree. Um, there's still more on it, but him and I went, yeah, we're not climbing any higher. Uh, so there's lovely juicy oranges out there, and I put bags out there, so feel free. And there is also a basket of empty Easter eggs that if you could help the Easter Bunny out and fill some eggs, I would greatly appreciate it. So there's a sign-up sheet so I know who has them. Take a bag. There's a dozen in each bag. These ones mean in. Just saying. Good morning. I got Cyrus a toy because it's his birthday. He didn't get a toy. Get back a toy. There you go. All right. So Miss Lisa's going to sit. All right. Yes, this is a really cool thing. Okay, so wait, hold on to it for a little bit. Hold on to it for a little bit. All right. And if you guys noticed, Cyrus was limping a little bit. He tripped this morning. So. Oh, yesterday. We're really, we're really milking it then. Got it. We're really milking it. Hi, how are you? I didn't even see you this morning. You snuck in without me seeing you. Good morning. How was your week? It was good. All right. Do you enjoy camp? No. I heard that. I'm sad. You had snow though. I was Were you? Did you get to play in the snow yet? Awesome. Yeah. So, did you help make a snowman? Alpha? Yeah. Oh, that's that. See, 
My older one didn't like going to winter camp because she doesn't like being cold and every time she went, she'd fall. So she'd come home with scrapes and so she didn't like winter camp either. But see, unfortunately, you don't get to go to summer camp because you're not in the city. Summer camp is so much better because you get to go swimming. And just saying, just saying. But you're, I mean, dad was up there, your brother was up there. I know you don't work in the same circles, right? David, did you have, you had the elementary kids too? Like Matt? Yeah. So, different realm. You got the cabins. You got the cabins. You were my daughter's favorite cabin. She loved cabin six. I didn't when I had to schlep all her stuff up there. It's the one on top. Why? <coughs> yeah, craziness. All right, so my high this week is it's Cyrus's birthday and Roman's birthday in the same day, and it has been a busy week for me. Um, I start my long-term assignment tomorrow in fourth grade. Um, and I get to go on a field trip to the San Gabriel Mission on Thursday. Hey, glad it's not raining. Just saying. Glad it's not raining. So looking forward to that. So yeah, you guys will not see me if you come by this week. And during the week, I will not be here. Only Saturdays and Sundays. So if you ever try to get, leave me a message. <laughs> Text me. I'll get to you. All right, we're ready to go. We're going to do Faces of Easter. We're going to have to do two a week to get it done. Oh, you want to do a high and low? You ready? All right, go. High low. Nice. Oh, so yeah, a little later than us. A little later than us, huh? But fine, you might get to the park. Quick, go to the park before it rains on Monday night. All right, highs and lows, what's your high? You got to bring baby sister today, didn't you? What's your high? What's the best thing this week? My high is playing with my sister. Yeah. Uh, all right. Can I hug her? <coughs> you hug your sister. You didn't wake her up, right? Okay. Don't wake her up. Don't wake her up. All right, my friend. Your high, I bet, is that it's your birthday. I heard you're getting an ice cream cake. Are you getting cake? You're getting cake. I'm getting mommy's cake. Mommy's cake. What's, what's your love? You trick? Right? Yeah, that's the love. I get that. I get that. Okay. You ready? Dear Lord, thank you for these children. Thank you for their enthusiasm, their love, their kindness, and just their smiles. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the wonders that are all around us far too often. We are uh, bent over backwards by the concerns of this world. Uh, some of them are uh, deep beyond imagining. Uh, but Lord, we know that you are with us. We know that you will sustain us in all trials. Lord, we uh, do lift up those who are uh, suffering in, in pain and in sickness. Uh, and we pray, Lord, for healing. Uh, we lift up the people of the nations around the world that are in a deep conflict. We pray, Lord, for a peace of wholeness, a peace uh, where, where there is justice. Lord, we lift up our own communities and pray, Lord, for healing and peace. Lord, we give you thanks for the blessings that we have. We know there are too many to count. We know, Lord, that you are always near and that you will sustain and strengthen us. Uh, Lord, we uh, uh, lift up uh, Ed, Ed's eye uh, and pray that you would lead him in the direction that you see fit that will uh, help him to walk with you. Uh, Lord, we lift up the family of Viola in her passing uh, and we pray that you would give them uh, some kind of comfort in the midst of such shock. Uh, Lord, we uh, lift up uh, Kim's friend, uh, Di Diane and Dennis, uh, and pray, Lord, for, for their healing. Lord, we uh, give you uh, um, over uh, Jeff's friend Mark with his skin cancer. We pray, Lord, that your healing would be full and complete and that he would be spared any uh, any continuing uh, and increasing trial in this. Uh, Lord, we uh, give you thanks for so many, many blessings. We stand in Barrow. We thank you for uh, their granddaughter and the sharing of her, her talents. Uh, we uh, give you thanks, Lord, for the MFSA and the document, uh, the work that uh, people are doing to uh, try to uh, lead us in, in the direction that you would call us to. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for uh, the birthdays um, uh, that we have, Cyrus and Roman, uh, and also the, uh, the, the, the beginning birthday uh, for baby Zoe and her family, Lord, we pray that you would surround her with your Holy Spirit and that she would uh, be strengthened and, and grow to, uh, to be a wonderful, uh, a wonderful Christian young woman. Lord, we uh, give you thanks for so many blessings. We know they're all around us. Lord, it, it's so easy to get caught up in, uh, in the frustrations of, of this world. We pray, Lord, that you would help us uh, to rise above them so that we can see the light of your eternity, so that we can know that you are with us, that you are present, and that you will, that you will give us all the strength and courage we need to truly follow you. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
to 10 and then verses 15 to 19 and then we'll be reading from the New Testament Mark 8 verse 27 to 38 when Abraham was 99 years old the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him I am God Almighty walk before me and be blameless and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I'll make nations of you, and kings shall come forth from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants, after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your descendants after you. And I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, 
you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Verse 15 to 19. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her, her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and said to himself, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live in, in thy sight. God. God said, No, but Sarah your wife shall bear, bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. New Testament, Mark 8, verse 28 to 38. And Jesus, <coughs> Jesus said, uh, and Jesus went on, went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others said Elijah, and, other, and, and others one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Christ. And he charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach, to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing it, his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind you, Satan, for you are not the side, on the side of God, but of men. And he called to him the multitude with his disciples and said to them, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of God for the people of God. Maxine and Renee had to duck out because they're getting our lunch ready. So uh, we give a, be sure you give a big thank you to them uh, that they uh, miss out on, uh, on a third of our worship, but they get our lunch ready. So uh, that's, a, that's a blessing. Let us be in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We pray, Lord. Uh, that our hearts would be open to you, and Lord, that we would uh, be ready to receive all that, that you would offer us this day as we join our hearts uh, in worship and fellowship. Amen. This last week, as we drove up campus, 
uh, Teresa pointed over to some apartments and said, I used to live there. And I said, oh, or is that where the, you had the ground squirrels? Uh, and she said, yes, and here's the story uh, behind the ground squirrels. Uh, when she and her brother and sister were very little, uh, their, her, their uncle Terry showed up with a cage, but in the cage was not some pet, in the cage was some ground squirrels. I'm sure he was very uh, proud of himself. And of course the kids were fascinated and excited about these ground squirrels. Uh, but something happened, the ground squirrels got out. I'm not saying that one of the kids left the cage open, but probably. And, uh, uh, and uh, the, the, the manager uh, came down uh, to talk uh, and, and told uh, her parents to watch out because uh, the ground squirrels loose and some of them had gotten into the manager's mattress and, uh, and chewed the mattress apart, made a little home in the mattress. And Teresa spoke right up. Remember, she's little, you know, four or five. And she said, we had some ground squirrels. That's as far as she got because a parental head went right over her face and, uh, and silenced her before she could confess their sin of letting ground squirrels go. Uh, I think that probably happened to her a lot, the parental hand over the mouth. Sometimes our failures are just honest mistakes. And the disciples in our Gospel of Mark blow it over and over again. They try to stop children from coming to Jesus, and it isn't that they dislike children. It was just that people did not allow children to take the attention of respected adults. When they told Jesus to send the 5,000 away to go find dinner for themselves, they weren't being mean. They just could not imagine Jesus could feed them all with five loaves and two fishes. When they were in a storm and Jesus comes walking on the water, they think it is a ghost and they cry like scared children. They are not natural cowards. They are just confronted by the unnatural. We all make mistakes. One of the churches I served was Lemon Grove. Uh, and I followed Jim and Kathy Ledgerwood uh, there. Uh, they had a, a little uh, three-year-old uh, named um, uh, Tiffany. And uh, she now is, of course, a wonderful young woman. Uh, but uh, the, they were having the children's story. Jim would tell the children's story. Uh, and as uh, they told the story, Tiffany started to dance around. And he told her to stop dancing. Uh, and she responded by lifting her skirt up over her head and she was wearing no underwear. And, and Jim and Kathy looked at each other with shock and in unison said, I thought you dressed her this morning. I guess Tiffany dressed herself. In our reading from the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, Abraham hears the promise of God for a fourth time. It is called the Covenant. And it is the promise that if Abraham will worship God alone, he and his wife Sarah will be blessed. That they will have the land of Israel, that they will have a son to carry on this blessing, and that they will be a blessing to all humanity. The problem was that it had been 24 years, and even though they had been richly blessed, there was no son to carry the promise into the future. When the covenant was first made, God told Abraham to look up at the stars of the desert. Your descendants will be more numerous than these. He was impressed. Then another time, he was shown the desert landscape and told that their offspring would be more numerous than the grains of sand. Again, impressed. And Abraham believed. He believed back then. Finally, in today's passage, God comes to him a fourth time, and our scriptures read that Abraham fell on his face. And this does not mean he tripped. It means that he knelt like Muslims still do today, with their faces down to the ground. He knelt to receive the promise again. But now he was 99 years old and already had a son, Ishmael, not by Sarah, but the son of the slave girl, Hagar. 
So in this very devout pose with his face to the ground, Abraham laughed at God. He said to himself, can a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? Can Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And he argued with God to no avail. Sarah could have the baby, and Abraham was told to name him Isaac, which means he laughs. But he wanted his son Ishmael to receive the blessing. And God says no. The son Isaac was named Isaac, he laughs, so that Abraham would never forget the day he laughed in the face of God. This was more than a mistake. The problem was that God's blessing did not match Abraham's desire. Miles Dewey Davis III was an American jazz trumpeter, hand, uh, band leader, and composer. He was among the most influential and acclaimed figures in the history of jazz and, in fact, of all 20th century music. John Coltrane played saxophone in Miles' band, sometimes at length. One day, Coltrane played his solo for a full 20 minutes, and at the end he said, I'm sorry, but, I, but when I get started, I just don't know how to quit. Miles looked over his trumpet and said, you might start quitting by getting that horn out of your mouth. <laughs> John wanted something different than the plan of his band leader. Abraham laughed in the face of God. In today's gospel passage, Peter's shocking rebuke of his master always seems to be more than a simple mistake. Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say I am? And they answer, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets? He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. You are the anointed one. And unlike in Matthew and Luke, Jesus gives no complimentary response. Mark just says, he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Peter and the rest of them do not yet understand the truth of Messiah. They expected a hero, not a savior. They gave true facts without understanding the truth. In Mark, this is immediately apparent. Jesus begins to teach them the truth about what it means to be the Messiah, that it means being obedient to God, even if that means death, even a torturous death on the cross. Peter says, no, this cannot be. Jesus looked at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. Remember Teresa's confession last week? She's all over my sermon today. Uh, her confession was when we were reading about the temptations of Jesus. She said she was going to the fabric store and would not buy extra fabric. That was her promise. And so when the devil tempted her, she said, get behind me, Satan. She came home with a lot of fabric. The devil said, there's great stuff back here too, and so she bought it. <laughs> yeah, that, that was her story last week. That, a, a confession that I'm true is, sure is true quite a bit of the time. Peter's desire was for a magical conclusion to their gospel story. Magical, not miraculous. It's miraculous only when it is God-directed. When the blessing is human-directed, it is magic. He wanted magic. The New Interpreter's Bible says that we have the same problem today, that we have trouble with this gospel story because we belong to a painkiller culture, painkilling culture. And so we can't accept that suffering is part of an authentic life. Our culture values the easy life over one that is meaningful and full of wisdom. Remember, the Gospel of Mark was written to Roman Christians, to a Roman church that had just endured immense suffering in order that their faith might continue. How do you maintain your faith when you are living in the aftermath of persecution and death? You remember that you follow a Savior who gave his life for us on a cross. 
you live through the lens of life and look forward to Easter morning where the brilliance of God's true blessings will shine through. The story of Peter is essential to our gospel. There is no failure that is beyond God's power of forgiveness. This is the message of true Christianity in both our present and our future. Life does not end in death. Life ends in new life. And I'd like to close with the story. It uh, comes from a, a funeral that uh, I was a part of in Sun City. Uh, that was for a, a wonderful lady named Evelyn Smith. Uh, she uh, um, passed away our, our first year there. Uh, and uh, she was a leading a member of uh, UMW and all sorts of the women's ministry that went on uh, in the church there. Uh, and uh, people stood up and said wonderful things about her, but the one I remember most uh, is her grandson. Her grandson her son stood up and said that his grandmother had saved his life. He was in a dark place uh, after getting out of the service. Uh, he descended into more and more trouble. And uh, he was uh, far away in the Midwest somewhere, uh, getting into trouble, getting into trouble with the police. Uh, and he got a, a letter from his grandmother, a note. And on that note, it said, we love you, forgive yourself and come on home. He said that he read that and Somehow all that pain and that trouble washed away. And he received a new hope, he said, that he had the kind of hope it took to start his life all over again. That's the power of the gospel. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That we can start all over again. That nothing goes beyond God's power to forgive. And in that power, we can be made right and whole and do. Amen. We continue our worship as we dedicate our tithes and offerings to God.
Gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you for all your blessings. We pray, Lord, that we might have eyes open to see you, to receive you, and to share you. In the name of our Savior, amen. Our last hymn, Wonderful Words of Life. Please turn to page 600 in your hymnals. Wonderful Words of Life. Please join with me and God be with you till we meet again. <laughs> 